If you're in piano lessons and you're feeling stuck, welcome to being human. We've all been there. When I was a kid and again when I was in college, I went through these long stretches of time where I just was not excited about playing the piano. I felt like I had plateaued. I felt like I was having trouble getting to the next level. The idea of practicing just wasn't fun. In this video, I'd like to share you five things that I did and five things that I've had my students do over the years that have helped us get unstuck and enjoying the piano once again. Now, the first place you wanna go, of course, is to your teacher. That goes without saying, but if you try any one of these things or even all five, you'll find yourself enjoying the piano again in no time. So let's get started. The first thing you can do is pick up a new project. Sometimes when we feel stuck, it's because we're just not that excited about the music we're playing. Maybe the music was just too hard or maybe we've had it for a really long time, but sometimes just switching up the music, especially if it's a, something that you're really excited about learning, that can be enough to get you excited about playing the piano again. Number two, journaling. Now this one, I was completely skeptical about at first. You know, writing about my feelings, stuff like that, not for me. But then I tried it and it worked unbelievably well. Now, if you want to try it, there's a very specific way to journal that'll help you sort of break through the sort of stuckness that you're feeling. First, write exactly what's going on, completely objectively. You could write, you know, it's been two weeks since the last time I practiced, or I practiced five minutes and then I got bored and then I stopped. Write very objectively what's going on. Next, write about how you're feeling about those things. We all sort of carry these internal narratives about ourselves. And when they're in our heads, it sort of carries this formless shape that makes us feel certain things that might not actually be true. So write how you're feeling, write the story that you're telling yourself, and then challenge yourself to write a different story, an alternative. Is there another interpretation of these things that you're feeling, the events that you're experiencing, and see what you come up with. There's no one thing that uh, you'll discover about yourself through this process, but you might discover that one thing that gets you unstuck. Number three, do a 30-day practice challenge. If you're like me, you really love challenges that come with long chains or long streaks. I think just as humans, we really like that, that idea of just sort of taking the bull by the horns with a challenge, the famous challenge accepted saying. So. Pick a piece that you want to learn or pick a goal to play 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, and set that 30-day challenge. And in the description below, I'm going to include a tool that's going to help you with that. This is a 30-day challenge spreadsheet, and all you need to do is go in and put the challenge for yourself. So it might just be practice 15 minutes a day, and then you could put the start date. And then here we have these numbers, one through 30, and when you complete that for that day, you can just put an X. You can actually technically put just about anything and that will turn green. And over time, you're not going to wanna to break this green stretch. Now, if you miss a day, you just type a dash in and that turns that block red. Don't let one red block ruin your streak, just pick it back up. But this tool can be really, really helpful in keeping track of your streak and keeping your motivation up to uh, complete your 30 day challenge. So again, you'll find a link to that in the description below. It's view only, so you'll have to go to file and then down to download, and then you can download it to the format of your choice. Number four, find a practice partner. One of the best things you can do for yourself to keep you accountable is to find a friend who's also on the same journey and hold each other accountable. You could set a specific uh, day of the week to play things for one another, or maybe set some goals together. Hold each other accountable, and then at least that way, you're not going through this yourself. Number five, plan a performance. Now this doesn't have to be a big deal. You could just plan to play for one person, but set a date, set a time, figure out what you're going to play, and aim towards that goal. There's something about not having the goals out in front of you. If you're just kind of playing the piano and you're learning pieces and you're doing lessons and there's no sort of end point for some of this music, that naturally lends itself to procrastination. And if you're feeling stuck, there's not really a reason to get unstuck. So go ahead and find somebody to play for it, set that date, and then you have your target that you're aiming for. 
I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button. We are here for you every step of the way in your piano journey. Thanks for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.